everyone, it's Elizabeth here. Let's talk a little bit more about the uh, procurement life cycle. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the second part of the procurement life cycle, which is finding a vendor. In our last video, we talked about requirements and gathering the requirements to go out to the vendors to ask if they're capable of providing you with the service. We've done that bit now. Now we have to contact some vendors and find out whether or not they are able to deliver the service for us. So once you know what your business requirements are, you can start contacting suppliers to check if they're able to provide those services or those goods. And that stage of the procurement life cycle would normally involve contacting, contacting people and just asking them the question. There's a few different ways to do this depending on how formal you need to be. If you've worked with a supplier before or you have preferred suppliers on your books, then it's actually quite easy to do because you can just get in touch with your account manager and um, have that conversation. They, can, they may not want to take on the job, but the first step is to ask if they're interested, right? If your company has suppliers for certain things, that's an approach to take, but you've also got some other options. Perhaps you want to go out to a different pool of suppliers. Perhaps you're not happy with your current supplier, or perhaps your current suppliers can't provide what you need and you need to start a whole new procurement exercise looking for some new vendors to work with. You can send out a request for information, RFI, which you, can, you might also hear called PQQ, which is Pre-Qualification Questionnaire. And that you can use when you don't exactly know what solution you're looking for, when you, you might have requirements but not perhaps the whole answer, and you want more information about the available options and suppliers will get back to you with, with those responses. And you can send that out to one or more suppliers and gather the information to help you work out what to do next. You can also send out a request for quotation or a request for a proposal or even an invitation to tender. Frankly, I think they all broadly serve the same purpose, which is asking people to bid for the work. You set out what your requirements are. You then set out exactly what you expect from the vendors and they then send you back their quotes in a format that you can easily compare. I think that's the, the trick there with the documentation is if you can provide them with a template to fill in for their return submission, it makes it much easier to do a comparison of the different vendors who you've selected. Before you start sending out things to anybody, it feels appropriate, to, I might, you might not feel the same as I do, but to, I think it's appropriate to put confidentiality agreements in place with the vendors who you will be sharing information with. Because a request to tender or a request for a proposal may well have a lot of detailed information about your business, about your information architecture, your infrastructure, your security principles, all that kind of stuff that you perhaps don't want just to be made public for the whole world to see. So having that level of confidential agreement in place with a supplier um, comes at this point before you start to get into the contracting. Okay, so you've sent it out. You've sent out the questions in a way that makes them easy to respond to. You've um, ideally, you've got the questions in a format that makes it pretty okay to sort of drop those responses back into the contract later as you come into contracting with the provider later on. Um, and you want to, if you can, have a set of standard selection criteria, but don't share them. If possible, don't share them with the, with the vendors. Um, you'll want to keep those to yourself, I think. I think it, it makes it easier, but you'll, you can make that judgment yourself. And you then can use the responses you get back from those tenders to read and compare the different supplier information pieces that you've got. Um, tick them off on your selection criteria form and you'll find that you've got a very objective way of looking and comparing between different suppliers. Now, vendors, before you even get to that ticking off the form part, you'll find that your vendors are coming back and asking you questions. And asking you questions during the selection process, during the tendering process, is perfectly fine. It helps show you that the vendor is serious it helps them answer their answer your questions more accurately and um, you're giving them the best possible chance of getting you the right answer. So it's definitely in your to your benefit to be able to respond back to suppliers. The idea is that you get, um, well, I would suggest you get a receipt, a, a, choose a date for the receipt of all the responses so you get all of the answers back in by a certain day, cut it off, go through the responses, do a comparison, and then you'll be able to decide which, if any of those vendors you want to take forward to the next point, which could be getting them in for a demonstration or a meeting or for them to talk through their ideas in more 
detail or you may well find for a very simple procurement that you're done that you've 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 got somebody who answers all your questions perfectly and is a good enough fit you're just going to go with them so get your answers back do your supplier selection at that level and then decide how much more you need to dig into in order to find the right supplier to work with okay that's it for that part of the procurement life cycle and i'll see you in my next video bye